Well, hey there, folks. Meteorologist Matt Barrington here. Sorry, it took me a second to get everything fired up here and everything working correctly. It's always an issue for me. All right, so uh, obviously we're, we're tracking Fred. We just got the new numbers in here from the Hurricane Center. They really haven't changed much with the, with the actual numbers. The wind speed's still the same, 35 miles per hour. The floor movement west-northwest at 12 is basically about the same. So that hasn't changed. Still a tropical depression. The reason why it's still a tropical depression because the center is actually directly over the island of Cuba. So it's moved a little bit more inland uh, and that's uh, it's not going to allow it to strengthen. Now we don't anticipate it staying that way. We, we do anticipate that it will work its way back out off the coast here and then out over the Florida Straits later on today or tonight. And then it will be able to regain a tropical storm status. But slowly, it's it's... It's going to be dealing with some issues out here as it works its way to the north, so that's a good thing. It's likely to stay fairly weak for everybody that's joining us here on our Facebook page. Uh, we do appreciate that. Let me uh, zoom on in, show you what we're looking at here. So this is uh, the newest uh, forecast path from the National Hurricane Center, and they did what I anticipated they would. They've actually shifted it a little bit to the west, not by much. Um, so here's the forecast cone, and it goes all the way over into our area, and right, actually right about where I-65 and I-10 meet here in Mobile County. It goes through Baldwin County, and it goes over towards the west coast of Florida, say around Cedar Key. And the middle part, the middle line, I know which is where everybody tends to focus, is is basically St. Vincent's Island. It's right here. It's a little Nash. It's a, little, uh, it's a reserve um, island there. St. George Island's right next door. Apalachicola is right here. So they shifted the line. 10, 15 miles. They barely shifted it. So they're still keeping it kind of right through that little point that sticks down in Florida. Cape San Blas on one side, St. Vincent Island, St. George Island on the other side. And they work it basically right through Panama City. Uh, but one thing, a couple things about this. One, there's still a cone, so we still have uh, possibilities of being anywhere in this cone. But the other thing is it's going to be weak. It's going to be a tropical storm. Almost all the weather will be on the right-hand side. Okay, so even if it comes pretty close to us or even into our area, a lot of the weather with this will be on the right hand side, will be east of us. Okay, so that's almost a given here at this point. Here's what it looks like. So here are the models. Let me see, I think I got this zoomed in. I want to go ahead and zoom on in here. Oops, got tied up here. Um, and so here's why they shifted it. So now they this purple line is about where the, the official forecast line is. You can see a number of these that are even a little bit farther to the west. Now, no, notice. They're, none of them are bringing it directly into our area. They're all pretty much focused on Panama City, maybe as far east as Sandestin. It's about as far, I mean, far west as Sandestin. That's, that's about as far west as any of these lines go, any of the models are going right now. Most of them are pretty focused right on Panama City. So once again, any storm that comes in straight up through here of this strength, which once again, we don't anticipate it being strong, almost all the weather will be on the right-hand side. So for Panama City and points eastward is where they'll see the worst weather out of this. And it's mainly going to be a rain event. Wind's not going to be a big deal here. It's mainly going to be a rain event. And since it's relatively slow moving, could see a lot of rain in that area. Here's some of the issues that it's dealing with. So this is the wind shear. And what we got here, this is the upper level winds. And right here is a big upper level low. Not good for tropical systems. And it, it, this hasn't changed. There's wind shear out here that it's going to have to deal with. So this is a big reason why we don't anticipate this getting all that strong. Winds of only 45, maybe 50 miles per hour as it makes landfall. So let's check out a couple of the models. This is the American model, and we'll move it on up. This is Sunday around lunchtime. That's Tampa Bay right here. And then moving on up into the Panhandle area, right, right on top of Panama City at noontime on Monday. Once again, look at all the weather. Apalachicola going over towards the Big Bend region of Florida, Tallahassee's right there. That's where the w nastiest weather will be, the heavy rain. And then you see on this side, you know, we may be dropping our rain chances really low on Monday if this continues to shape up to be the way it's going to be, that, you know, we'll be on the dry side of the system as it makes landfall. Now, as it moves on in, see this model basically brings it up to maybe Andalusia or so. So it's still keeping it east of us and you can see the difference once again that's the american model monday lunchtime landfall this is the european model sunday at noon off of tampa it's pretty much exactly what the other one showed all right so where does it have it making landfall well remember the other one had around panama city this one's a little bit more like destin so this is getting a little closer to our area and this is the most westward solution 
And once again, look, the heavy, heavy stuff right here in, in the bright yellow and oranges off to the east of the system. Could get some light rain if it comes that far, but not very much. We wouldn't get uh, limited amounts of rain. Heaviest stuff stays on the east side of that core system. Once again, you're looking at a Monday, midday landfall there. So the two main models, the American and the European, have very similar solutions. One's got Panama City. One's got about 30 miles farther to the west in about the Destin area. Both of them show a weak system, everything loaded on the east side here with uh, Fred. So today, Fred dealing with land. It's on land right now in Cuba, and it's dealing with that wind shear as time goes along. Uh, it will be able to develop a little bit in the eastern Gulf, but thankfully you won't be able to get all that strong. Winds of 45, 50 miles per hour. And I'm breaking it down as a likely weak and a bit east of us is where it's likely to make landfall, like I said, Destin or over towards Panama City, limiting impacts to high surf and high risk of rip currents. That's the thing that concerns me because, you know, a lot of folks will be visiting, going to the beach and that sort of thing. Rip current risk goes up to moderate tomorrow, goes up to high Sunday and Monday, and we want to keep folks out of the water because anytime there's even a weak tropical system, it really stirs up the Gulf because, you know, the Gulf is so enclosed that the waves just bounce around like it's inside of a bathtub. So that, that's going to be the main thing we're probably going to have issues with are going to want to watch out for. And whew, I'd love to say that, hey, that's it, right? Just this likely fairly weak tropical system that we're dealing with in a few days. But unfortunately, we got one right behind it, almost on the same path. Uh, this one will likely become grace before too long and head basically kind of in the same area. So we're going to have to keep an eye on that for a few days. So you don't have to worry about this one right now. Worry about or what? I'm not going to say worry about uh, Fred because I don't think it's a big worry. Uh, but we want to keep an eye on it just in case anything changes. And then once Fred, we've dealt with that one, we can kind of focus in a little bit more on whatever that one times, times out to do. All right, so the radar has been pretty quiet this morning. Losing some of the images here, uh, but just know that there really hasn't been much of anything here this morning. High pressure has moved in. That's going to dry us out for today, and then it's going to move back off to the east, and that'll allow showers and storms to bubble back up again tomorrow. So here's your future cast. A few showers and storms are possible, but this is five o'clock. I mean, that's that's it. Not showing a whole lot. So a drier day today for your Friday looks pretty good. So if you have any plans, shouldn't have any real issues, just watch out. It's going to be awfully hot. Temperatures will be well up into the 90s, only spotty showers and storms. Heat index values easily over 105 in many spots this afternoon. Anytime you get above 105, that gets up into that concern range. So please be careful out there. If you've got the kids out there, make sure uh, they stay hydrated and they take frequent breaks in the heat of the day. And here's your forecast for the next seven days. Let me get my head out of here so you can see the whole thing pretty well. And so today the rain chances are pretty low. Saturday and Sunday rain chances go back up to around 60%. So showers and storms are very likely. Doesn't mean it rains all day, but there will be showers and storms. Now, the rain chances on Monday and Tuesday are going to be highly dependent on exactly what happens with Fred. Uh, very easily could drop those rain chances off to 20 or 30 percent if Fred is far enough to the east of us. So we'll just have to kind of wait and see on that. Um, but nonetheless, temperatures will remain hot. Of course, we are still talking about uh, Fred. I mean, for anybody that joined late, I'm going to throw the forecast up again. Get that up there so you can see it. It takes a second to load, but eventually it will come on. All right, so that's the latest forecast track. Uh, we're looking at a Monday uh, landfall, possibly Monday morning into Monday lunchtime. The other thing about the uh, the hurricanes, sir, they've they've had the um, they're going a little faster than what most of the models are saying. Most of the models have more like midday on Monday, so we'll have to kind of wait and see on that too. Um, but there you go. We're in the cone on the west side of the cone. Worse, the weather will be on the east side of this system, so. Um, that will limit our impacts for the most part, but it'll come pretty close. So we're going to have to keep an eye on this for, for sure over the next few days. Thankfully, not anticipated to be a strong storm at all. It's dealing with a lot of issues. Uh, 50 miles per hour is what the Hurricane Center has it as makes landfall. So, uh, 
you know, not a big deal for us. We can easily deal with a low range tropical storm. So we'll keep an eye on it for you though here at Fox 10 News. We anticipate a landfall once again sometime during the day on Monday. For everybody that joined us here on our Facebook page, I do appreciate it. Have yourselves a great Friday, a great weekend. We will catch up with you, of course. We'll be tracking this all weekend long. Fox 10 News meteorologist Jennifer Lambers in tonight for the 4, 5, and 9. You can catch her then for the latest updates, and I will be in all weekend for all the latest updates as well. Take care now.